Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to be looking into the rarely used defensive stance and how it works on a mechanical level, so you'll know how to recognize situations where it's giving your units a desirable behavior. We're then going to look at the guard and follow commands, how they're related but different, and how one may be the secret to consistently winning every Dark Age scout battle. Now, aggressive stance is of course the default for the vast majority of units when they're created, and you could no doubt have a very decent level of success keeping all of your units on that stance at all times. The second most popular stance is actually stand ground, which is my preference with archers for a couple of reasons. They're less likely to follow units into town center fire, and also just seem to path around each other better when given an attack order. Heading into this, I realized I really don't use defensive stance all that often, and didn't even know the exact rules for how it works, so that's what we'll be looking at first. To start off simply, I was curious if defensive stance units would be more selective in who they fight, or even if they'd fight villagers at all. Here I have the game paused, and you can see I have villagers at various distances, and all of the samurai here are on defensive stance. If I unpause, notice one of the samurai doesn't attack, which right away implies to me they're not searching as far as they normally would. Skipping ahead at a certain point, you can see they then move back toward where they started, but not quite all the way there, which is sort of odd. If I put the final samurai on aggressive stance to confirm, suddenly he can see the villager at the limit of his sight and engages with it, though obviously at the end he doesn't do the same behavior of returning to his starting place. This tells us a few interesting things about defensive stance, but let's go deeper. The samurai here has a line of sight radius of 6, and you can see I've outlined his sight with dirt so we can keep track of it, and if a unit crosses into the grass, he should be able to see it. With a scout unit, notice I can enter the first grass tile without a problem, but if I get any closer, he'll chase my unit. Interestingly though, he won't leave that inner circle, and while I can dance right up to the edge of it, as soon as my unit steps on the last grass tile, he turns back, heading toward his starting location. It's definitely not that the unit just loses interest over time, as I can run him around that circle for as long as I want, and it's only when I'm 6 tiles away from his starting location that he gives up. The obvious next test to me was to then increase his line of sight by 2, and see if that maximum range is based on his line of sight, or if it's just a 5 tile defensive radius, regardless of how far he can see. It turns out his extra line of sight changes nothing, and he still chases me for the exact same distance, and loses interest as soon as I'm on the final grass tile. This suggests to me that all units will behave in a similar way, but just to confirm, I used a Mongol Hazar with 12 line of sight on defensive stance and saw the exact same 5 tile defensive radius before he loses interest in chasing me. Likewise, just for fun, I did it again with a Spearman whose line of sight I reduced it to. He can't see my scout until it's almost on top of him, but once he sees it, he can be led the exact same distance away before giving up. Now, one odd behavior I noticed from units on defensive stance is here if the pikeman is being shot by a longbowman standing outside of its 5 tile defensive area, it'll actually run away. It stays within its established 5 tile area, and you can see it returns to the center once it gets too far, but it's still interesting behavior. Contrast that with how a pikeman on aggressive stance reacts, charging the attacking unit even though it's well outside of the pikeman's usual line of sight. There are definitely moments with infantry that the defensive behavior might be advantageous, say if you're trying to avoid being baited by archers into castle fire, and of course there are other times you might want the limited range to protect one specific area of your town. An example when defensive stance makes a lot of sense would be feudal age spearmen, where the 5 tile defensive radius means that scout cavalry can't lead them away to attack your exposed villagers. Likewise, with cavalry and trade routes, defensive stance units will naturally confine themselves to a small radius, instead of chasing trade carts back and forth across the map. Outside of a few select situations though, defensive stance is not really used that often, but at least you know how it works now. There's one odd case though I want to address, where the game actually pushes you into defensive stance unless you opt out. For nearly all units, they're created on aggressive stance, but strangely the ram, mangonel line, and bombard cannon always start on defensive. That got me wondering if I should leave them on that stance, ever switch them to aggressive instead, or even if there's a difference. Playing around with it, I really don't think defensive stance is necessarily better. Rams, for instance, have a very short line of sight and search radius, so they already struggle to find new buildings at times, but you can see on defensive stance that gets even harder as they stop after 5 tiles and go back to the start. Contrast that with the ram on aggressive stance, which will keep looking for new buildings. Switching to looking at onagers, in this case we get some clarification on the rules. It turns out any ranged units will be happy to attack units outside of the defensive area, but they themselves can't be lured outside the bounds. In some situations, I'd actually prefer the behavior of aggressive stance more than defensive, especially when raising enemy towns. 
I think many players have intuitively figured out playing the game that rams and bombard cannons should be on aggressive stance when raising, as they seem to spread out better, and that's exactly how it seems to be working upon closer inspection. Demo ships also begin on defensive stance by default. Similarly, this prevents them from traveling more than 5 tiles away and pursuing an enemy unit, same as we saw before. Though, of course, if you prefer they be more assertive, you can switch them to aggressive stance to remove the 5 tile distance limit. So that's defensive stance and how it can be used to generally keep your units from wandering off. But then how is that different than guarding? This is a function not used all that often and is an advanced command, like patrol or attack move, and not a stance. In fact, you can guard a unit or building in aggressive or defensive stance. So how does that work? Here we have a halberdier on aggressive stance who has also been ordered to guard another unit. Notice that if we get too close, he tries to intercept our unit and will chase us for any distance across the map. If he eventually catches up and my unit dies or it goes out of his vision, then the unit returns to guarding. In this case, the trigger distance is 6 tiles from the guarded target instead of 5 for defensive stance and actually has nothing to do with how close I am to the halberdier itself. Notice he reacts as soon as I reach the grass tile, whether he's on the closer or far side of the king from my scout. But now let's have him guard again, but this time switch him to defensive stance. With that combination, he works a bit differently, but not in the way I expected. This time, he lets me get much closer to the king, down to two tiles, though if I trigger his guarding behavior, he then chases me and continues to chase across the map. It seems all defensive stance did here was give me more leeway to approach whatever he's guarding, but once I trigger it, defensive stance does not restrict his movement. Where it gets really weird though is if you're asking him to guard, but also be on stand ground, and his behavior is actually identical to aggressive stance for some reason. And you can see as soon as I step on the grass, he'll chase me across the entire map. Guarding definitely adds a few odd behaviors, and here you can see even just a few tiles from the halberdier guarding the king on aggressive stance, normally he would attack any of my units immediately, and it's only when I get too close to the king that he reacts. That got me curious if units could in fact guard themselves, and the answer is yes. Here I have a halberdier on stand ground and switch him to defensive stance. None of the red units are within 5 tiles, so he'll happily hang out there, and I can then have him guard himself on defensive stance, and again he's going to stay in place. If I then set him to stand ground though, he switches to the more aggressive guarding behavior and will start attacking nearby units despite being on stand ground. Considering though units with the guard command will pursue approaching enemies across the map, it makes it pretty clear to me that spearmen defending woodlines for example should be on defensive stance but not guarding the lumber camp or villagers, which to me actually undermines the whole idea of the guard command to begin with. The only situation I can really understand is if you want a group of units to follow a specific hero in a campaign, though even that use case is questionable, as it seems like they just lag behind and leave your hero exposed anyway. In fact, the guard command seems so pointless, I was looking around for any use case idea someone had, and came across a claim by Marauder Dave that some people claim it made units attack faster. This is actually kinda true, though not in the literal sense that it increases their attack rate. To show how it works, here we have 5 hand cannoneers, two of which are guarding themselves on aggressive and defensive stance, and the other three are just using the basic stances in order of popularity, with aggressive, stand ground, and then defensive last. The game is then paused, and if I switch diplomacy and unpause, you can see something really interesting happens. Slowing things down, you can see that the units guarding themselves do tend to attack first. I did this 5 times, and it was pretty consistent that units guarding and on attack stance attacked earlier than especially the defensive stance unit, so it seems there might be something to this. I then flipped which units were getting each stance, so this time the units on guard stance are at the bottom just to make sure there wasn't something else about those specific units going on, and again saw guarding units fire off their initial shot generally faster, with defensive stance being the slowest. It's not quite as clean and consistent as I'd like, but it seems something about guard stance puts them on high alert to pick up targets, and something about defensive stance makes them a bit slower to start fighting. The same thing, in case you're wondering, also happens for melee units, with scouts in this example. At the same time, I'm somewhat skeptical of its practical utility though, as there's a whole bunch of other behaviors you get thrown in with guarding, like not engaging anything that's too far away from whatever they're protecting, and I feel like you need quite a bit of experience with this to figure out exactly when it's helping more than it hurts over just an attack move or patrol. To keep going with the potential of guard, I then tried a large number of scouts, where I was the blue player and an AI was red. Having all the units target each other, blue actually wins just about every time. It's been known for a while that there's a very slight edge in perfectly equal fights to player 1 over player 2, etc. 
Check it out though. If instead I pause, switch to being player two, and have one of the rows of Red Scouts self-guard just before the fight begins, the results flip and they consistently win their fights one-on-one, -on -one, whereas the other row I didn't have Red self-guard lost 80% of the time. I don't want to overstate this and take from it what you will, but it seemed consistent to me that having your unit guard itself just before a fight, while it doesn't outwardly change anything and they don't appear to get a first hit or attack any faster over time, with everything perfectly matched between the two units, at the end the tie seems to go to the self-guarded unit instead of player one, for unclear reasons. All I'm saying is if you're playing as red against blue and are jumping into a dark age scout fight, it might be worth a shot self-guarding your unit at the last moment. No guarantees, of course, but so far it looks very promising to me if you time it just right, a second or two before they engage. At the very least, I think it's fair to say something funny here is going on. At the same time, I'm less sold on this with groups of units though, as while in this case green is self-guarding, which actually didn't seem to hurt and they won the first two fights I tried, on the third test I started to notice an issue. If the unit your group is guarding is killed mid-battle, then all of your units stop fighting for a moment. And even after they re-engage, they're just fighting without even an attack move or patrol order. So even if it did lead to better fighting while the guarded unit was alive, after the guarded unit goes down, I expect the rest of your army is actually fighting worse. Remember this also only works if two units are exactly balanced and get their first hit at the exact moment, which really isn't all that common. This all led me even farther down the rabbit hole though. Now I'm starting to wonder how guarding behavior is different than follow, which I have to admit is something I have never used in any situation. Follow says it orders your unit to of course follow, but also avoid detection. In fact, unlike guard, it seems like this is actually meant to be used on your enemies. Trying it out here with the blue halberdier following his own king, you can see he completely ignores my scout, even when it comes right up to them. This halberdier is on aggressive stance, so the follow order seems to be completely overriding his regular behavior. Likewise, if I set him from following the king to following the enemy scout, again, he's completely passive. I wouldn't describe this as avoiding detection walking right up to me like this, but as the game suggests, if you ever want to follow a unit and see where it goes without killing it, then now you know how to do it. In practice, the main use case for this would be as a way to push deer. The idea is to line up your scout so that your following will scare the deer toward the town center, and at least sometimes it does work out pretty nicely. Other times though, the deer stops at just the right distance, so it's not far enough to trigger the scout to move closer, but also isn't close enough to scare the deer, so it's not completely foolproof, but it could be useful if you're also keeping an eye on it to prevent that. But there you have it. Generally, you probably won't make too much use of these tools, especially guard and follow, which both maybe have one niche use in the early game. Defensive stance though definitely has a few good uses, and also just being aware of when you might want to turn it off in favor of aggressive stance can be something worth keeping in mind as well, especially now that you know what to expect from it. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.